and the transferred wave yeah and the transferred wave actually was not has not been analyzed in the literature and we found that is the there is no replication shift and there is uh, the change of amplitude uh, will follow this formula here and this, as you can see in this comparison between FDTD and analytical formula Now I talk about the Michelson Molly interferometer. So this is a well-known interferometer. We have system moving a certain speed B, and the wave is uh, transmitted here in the long longitudinal direction and here in the transverse direction. This is in the moving frame. We have the wave going like this, and the time the delay is given by this formula, and in longitudinal direction is given by this formula. Between these two time, uh, if we uh, uh, divide them, we will have the gamma factor. So this one is, is gamma factor. Um, uh, there is gamma. So if this one is multiplied by inverse gamma, then there will be there will be they will have the same value, and that's the hypothesis of uh, uh, Lorentz is to consider that the lens is uh, attracted by inverse gamma. And if you do that, then uh, you, you, so the lens is not straight direction. If you do that, then you will get the same uh, time for the uh, for the longitudinal direction and, and the transverse direction. This is because in Michelson Mori it wasn't they were in the experiment for interferometer there was a Michelson experiment in 1881 and the Michelson Molly in 1887. Uh, both of them, there was they were um, not successful to measure a difference between the two times. We did the analysis with the FDTD with the longitudinal configuration. We have two observer moving. We have also the, the plane wave source moving, and we analyze the delay so from one point, uh, one point to another this is for the transverse configuration we also analyze the delay between this point and this point and this is the result that we obtain so in the longitudinal uh, direction we obtain the same <coughs> as the result presented in the literature and in transverse direction actually we found out that uh, the, the 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 angle so in, if we see here, the wave is reflected and then it will be reflected by a, a, a reflector that is a, a 90 degree and will come back uh, to the uh, detector. And the, the wave coming, the wave that is getting in launch field configuration will also come back to the detector. This is what we see here. So they all come back to this detector here. And uh, we found that there is an angle. They, 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 they don't come back with the same angle. There is an angle difference. If we want them to come back at the same angle, then the mirror, the spatial, spatial mirror, should be not at 45 degrees, but uh, turned a very little in order to, for the two beams to converge. So when they are not converged, we found that the that, uh, delay is given by this formula. And when we make the beam converge, we find that delay is given by this formula. So we, we find again the, the formula given uh, by uh, 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 Lawrence. And actually in Michelson paper, we found that he talked about this uh, beam divergence and uh, he predicted that it should be a low uh, effect. And actually in FDTD, we confirm that it has a low effect. This result from the Michelson uh, Morley experiment, uh, they are not in the same scale, but they show what was expected in terms of uh, phase, sh phase shift or difference in time delay. And, uh, and that's the measurement. So it, they didn't measure something uh, like it's, uh, no effect at all. They has a measure effect, but very small. And we think that this, there is something we, did, we, sh we should analyze is the effect of the reflection 
or the, the phase of the reflection um, uh, coefficient for the moving mirror because here this mirror is a 90 degree, is a sort of zero degree here and this one a 90 degree uh, the and the motion is here at, uh, with the b they will not have the same we found that the, the, the phase of reflection is, a, is not the same for both and this makes the structure asymmetric so it's not only the lens probably the, 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 the light pass that is different due to the velocity that we, we saw here it's also the phase of the reflection coefficient that is different and we want to analyze this to see if it has no it has an effect in uh, in the result we can we can make this uh, phase of action coefficient uh, to be um, negligible if the lens here is high and actually um, uh, Michelson thought about increasing the lens but he, the the increase the lens by uh, using uh, multiple, uh, multiple, multiple multiple paths like this so they have to add so it's, it's like the problem will not be resolved. You will, you will still have uh, uh, many phase of efficient coefficient in this with this with, uh, with this uh, configuration, and many with this one. So this is an analysis we want to pursue to see if uh, using MDTD we can uh, have a, a similar effect as uh, observed in the measurement. We always. Uh, op we are always open to the possibility that uh, uh, the, um, we, we can uh, explain the Michelson Morley result uh, based on uh, uh, only uh, classical uh, technologies. So, this is something we have to try uh, uh, just, to, um, uh, just to complete this analysis. Uh, so, later on, Michelson. Michelson, uh, Gale, and Pearson, they develop a new interferometer. And this interferometer actually doesn't have this issue of uh, asymmetry. The, the wave coming, there is two waves, so one going in this direction and the other one going like in the other direction. They both follow the same paths. So they don't follow different paths. So there is no asymmetry here. And that interferometer that they have done in 1925 actually was successful they were able to measure the speed of, of rotation of the Earth. And this is based on the sonic effect that we will talk about, that we will talk about uh, later. So we'll talk now about the sonic effect. And the sonic effect has have a application in GPS and also in electromagnetic and optical gyroscopes. In our FDTD code, we can modelize the signet effect by moving observers, as we can see here. So this is in the wing wave guide. We can move the observer with the, with the speed of V, and we obtain and obtain the same result as the signet effect. We can do it with the uh, um, a ring wave guide or uh, a ring. Uh, uh, microstic line, as we see here. This is the result for the wing wave guide, and this is the result for wing microstic. You see here the observer moving. And this is a time signal that is observed numerically. And uh, we can measure the time signal as a function of B over C. And the results are in agreement with the result uh, presented by Sinai. Here, we'll, I will want to talk about the Compton experiment. Uh, the objective here is to see if uh, the, uh, the FDTD can be useful for uh, so, uh, some uh, analysis that has been done in the literature. Uh, so, for example, in Compton experiment, it's, uh, it is about the scattering of, uh, here we see X-rays, that is emitting graphic target. And, uh, and the analysis, so depending on different angles, uh, the, uh, the analysis show high frequency photo 
scattering after the inter interaction of charged particles, like electrons. Hampton uh, based his analysis on spatial relativity and quantum theory. He found that he has two wavelengths. When he looked to the this wavelength spectrum, he has two wavelengths uh, that we see here. So depending on the angle, if he at zero degree, he will have this uh, in the spectrum. And at different angles, he will have uh, two wavelengths big. And the distance, sorry, the, the, the distance between the two wavelengths is given by this formula. H is Planck constant. M is the mass of the electron, speed of light, and theta is the angle uh, of the scattering here, the angle here. In MDTD, we are modeling um, an infinitely long line source, an infinitely long metallic wire, and the, the line source is moving at a certain speed v in this direction. And we look to the field at different angles. In order to, we, we try to obtain the same results that, uh, that, that, we, that are presented in, in here for the Compton experiment. So we matched the frequency of the line source and the size of the structure, et cetera. And we were able to replicate the result in terms of the wavelengths, but this at zero degree um, and uh, this one at 45 degree, 90 degree, and 135 degree. And we are plotted here. You see that in MVTD, we have a very close result compared to the experiment. And based on the Doppler effect for the moving source, we obtain this formula as a function of the angle. So the, the, the difference between the, the wavelengths, uh, the normalized difference between the wavelengths will follow this formula. And if we compare this formula that we obtain thanks, thanks to FDTD to the formula given by Compton, the two formula can be made uh, equivalent if we satisfy this formula, m0v equal h over lambda i. And actually this formula uh, represents the conservation of momentum for a moving electron with speed v. And it has been derived by Gudebroy. So this is an indication for us that maybe uh, uh, our model in LDTD uh, can be useful. And uh, uh, we think that uh, maybe uh, uh, more work has to be done in this direction to see if uh, this can be used uh, in such problems. Now I will talk about uh, EV-side faster than light analysis. So a very interesting analysis. Uh, first the question is, is faster than light possible? So some scientists like Tesla, so there are many scientists actually, not only Tesla, that they have claimed that they have measured faster than light speed of particles. And we found in the literature, many you know, researchers said that uh, if, if faster than light is possible, then it, this should invalidate the special theory of relativity. But we don't think so, uh, because the Lorentz theory which is validated by the same experiment and use the same equation than the special theory of relativity. It uh, considers the speed of light as a limit of the model, not a theoretical limit of reality. So it's, if we follow the, uh, just take the equation and the result obtained by special theory relativity, the same has Lorentz Euler theory, and we uh, put aside the interpretation is it an ether or no ether? Is, uh, is this a uh, real uh, uh, distortion of space and time, et cetera? We put this aside, then, uh, and we've, we, uh, based on the Lorentz ether theory, we, there is no necessarily a limit of the speed, speed, uh, speed of propagation. In the beginning of the 20th century, there was uh, Willem Wien. He was among the well-known scientists who claimed that the speed of light cannot be exceeded. And he based his, uh, this, his, uh, his statement on the Eversite analysis of the moving charge. As we said before, 
in the analysis of every site, the energy becomes infinite when the speed of light is reached. And Wilhelm Wien has a strong influence on the young scientists, such as Einstein and others. But you remember that we say in the, uh, during the talk that maybe we should revisit the analysis done by ABSAT for the moving charge. Maybe the field is not increasing. So it's, it's not increasing, it will not become infinite. And what, what ABSAT thought about that? Actually, ABSAT, he considered that faster than light possible. And he said, I'm not afraid of infinity. And this is a paper, Electromagnetic Waves, the Propagation of Potential and the Electromagnetic Effect of Moving Charge, that he published in 1884. And in this paper, actually, he did analysis based on Maxwell equation uh, of a moving charge moving faster than light. And he predicted, you see here the cone of shock waves, and the formula here, sinus theta equal v over uh, u. Uh, so V, I think, is the speed of light, and U is the speed of uh, the speed of motion. And he predicted that based on Maxwell equation. And he added in the end this sentence: to avoid misconception, I should remark, remark that this is not in any way an account of what would happen if, happen if a charge were impelled to move through the ether at a speed several times that of light about which I know nothing, but an account of what would happen if Maxwell's theory of dielectric kept true under the circumstance, and if I have not misinterpreted it. So he presents the result that, that uh, for him uh, should be permitted by Maxwell equation if uh, a charge is moving faster than that. And we, we want to do the same thing. So we use uh, the FDTD, which is all the Maxwell equation, and we move the line source uh, at a speed faster than that. And this is what we get. This is a line source moving at a speed faster than light. And uh, we measured the angle with the uh, numerical protector. And we found that it agrees with the Ernest Max formula. So the same formula that uh, obtained um, uh, in his analysis every side. So we don't know if faster than light is possible. If it's possible, and if Maxwell equation uh, kept right during this, this, this circumstance, uh, this is what we should obtain. So now the conclusion. So we have seen that the utilization of the FDTD method for moving bodies without the implementation of void Lorentz information give many different results in different problems. We encourage the implementation of moving object in commercial FDTD software. And if we want to add actually relativistic effect for the moving source and moving observer, we can use this proposed formula. And then I thank you for uh, attending this presentation. And uh, this is concluding my presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It was very interesting <laughs> especially with added uh, 